Welcome to The Sound, KQAL-FM's weekly behind-the-scenes look at Midwestern-made music. From writing and recording to distribution and promotion, The Sound is your source for new releases and exclusive interviews from Midwestern artists. Support for The Sound is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Rolling. Tonight on The Sound, we give you Winona's own Dante DeGrazia with his latest album, Nothing Ever Happens. But I gotta add, a lot happens. Tonight we bring him into the studio to get a look behind the scenes. So go relax and grab some snacks as we present to you Dante DeGrazia, tonight on The Sound. was Far Side by Dante DeGrazia off his newest release, Nothing Ever Happens. We have him in the studio with us tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, um, Far Side, um, what was, off, off the song alone, uh, what was the inspiration for that? Hmm. Um, I, I kind of imagined uh, two, uh, two people in a bookstore, and um, they're both really shy. They're introverts. And uh, you can tell that they want to meet, but neither knows how to introduce themselves. So they just watch from a distance and hope the other, the other one says something. Hmm. Um, so, quick, a uh, little bit of a starting, of a starting off. How'd you get started in music? Um, I grew up playing piano when I was little, and uh, all through high school. I was learned how to play piano and then started a band with my friends in high school, senior year, called Driftwood Bones. Mm-hmm. Um, we put out two albums, 
and then we all went to Luther College, where we studied uh, classical music and choir, a lot of us. Um, and then we left there, and we came back to Winona, most of us, and yeah, then I just continued to start bands or join bands and do solo projects and play as much as I could. Very interesting. Um, so off your album, Nothing Ever Happens, um, who did the artwork for that? Um, Harrison McCormick. He's a, a student here. He was a, a mass com and film student, I think. Graduated maybe a couple years ago. And he, uh, he took that photo on top of my roof, and then he edited out the background and made it all apocalyptic, and yeah, he's a very talented dude. Oh, yeah. It really, it really looks, um, it looks really interesting. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think this is a good place to kind of take a pause. So we'll be back to talk more with Dante, but for now we're going to play another tune. Uh, from this album for you. So next song is no song Nothing Ever Happens, and you're listening to it on The Sound tonight on KQAL 89.5. Woo! That was Nothing Ever Happens here on KQAL tonight on The Sound. So um, so that song is the name of the album. So 
I'd like to take a bit to talk about it. Like, where did that come from? Um, I had been working on that song for a while, for a couple of years. Um, but then when COVID hit, it really started to make sense um, that. And with all of the political stuff going on around that time, um, it seemed like like the media was constantly just just uh, on fire. Really, um, couldn't really get a break from the constant problems with with COVID and everything. And so I was thinking to myself, I just want to be somewhere like complete darkness or complete silence. Some somewhere that just nothing happens at all, so that I can just be tranquil for just a minute. But it kind of has a also leans into um, a bit of the story of Princess Winona and how she um, jumps off the cliff. So there are some there's some undertones of death in there too. But I think the song really is saying that without dying, I would like to be somewhere that that I can be tranquil and calm for just like a couple minutes out of every day. Right, right. So what inspired you to like go into a solo career? Cause I see that you're a part of, uh, cause I see that you're a part of a few bands. So uh, what what kind of made you think, hey, I should start doing this uh, so this uh, solo thing for a bit? Um, I just have so many songs that um, I wanted to get out. And it's really, it's it's hard to get together with bands all the time. People are living in different cities. Um, and I just figured that if I wanted to get these songs out, I, I kind of had to, to do it on my own sometimes. I love being in the bands also. And yeah, I love, I love both. I love the aspect of playing all the instruments on a track. And then I also love playing with my friends when we're all playing different instruments. Right, right. So, how do you balance uh, having your solo career as well as being a part of like band, bands like like Texas Toast and Sleeping Jesus? Um, the solo career really is mostly what I do when I'm at home. So I'm not currently touring my solo career at all. Um, I'm only playing shows with the other two bands. So, the solo stuff comes out. <clears throat> after I get home and I want to sit on my computer or play guitar for the rest of the night or whatever, that's that's where I do the solo stuff is mostly fully alone. So kind of helps balance the social and the the uh, introvert. Right, so that when you're at home you can just do your own thing and then you can go out and do the same thing with... All right. Yeah. All right. All right, so I think it's a now's a pretty good chance to get into another song. So up next we have deep breaths, and we'll talk about that and more tonight on the sound here at eighty nine point five KQAL. Feet. 
so that was Deep Breaths here at 89.5 KQAL tonight on The Sound. So, um, so uh, what inspired Deep Breaths? Um, hmm. <clears throat> Deep Breaths started as kind of a, a lo-fi folk song. It's about missing your your ex and kind of like nothing ever happens where well in contrast nothing ever happens is about wanting to to be alone and tranquil whereas deep breaths is about being alone and being <clears throat> um uncomfortable in that situation and feeling like you you don't have anyone to talk to um it's kind of the the darker side of of missing someone ah so it's like so it's kind of like a story, like you're finally alone, but you also have to cope with the fact that you don't have anyone right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that it's like Far Side is the love story. Nothing ever happens is the the being alone, and then yeah, so, deep breaths is the breakup song. Ooh. So it's kind of so all your so all your albums have kind of like deep undertones of love of love, and then there's. Wanting to be alone, you're alone, and okay. Yep. And then the the second half of the EP gets a little darker after that, and then it becomes uh pretty political. Oh yeah, I I uh I slowly started getting those darker undertones when I was listening to it. All right. So currently, what's in what kind of music do you listen to? Like, what's in your playlist uh, most recently? Hmm. I'm really uh, obsessed with this band Parcels. They're from Australia. I think they moved to France, though. Um, they play like upbeat funk music, um, but then they recently their their most recent releases have moved into like classic European house music, which is some, weirdly something I'm obsessed with right now. Say that name. Say that name again. Parcels. Um. No. Uh, sorry. The genre. You're. Oh, uh, like European house music. What is that? Just like the ints, 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 oh. ints, 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 and it goes on for like eighty straight minutes, and I don't know. You you get in your head and you can't stop dancing, and I think people in Europe would take party drugs probably and do that whole thing. But yeah, I don't know. It's a genre that I've really been in love with lately. It sounds very interesting. <clears throat> Um, how many pennies do you think right now could fit in this room? It's a pretty, it's a pretty small room, but it has decent scale. My initial thought was a billion, but I think I don't, I can't actually fathom <laughs> how large a billion is. So I'm going to go with 500 million. Gotcha. <laughs> Cause like a billion seconds is like. 38 years whereas a million seconds is like like a couple days or something like that right that always right. Blew, blew my mind <laughs> or would you prefer to tackle the one the question is cereal a soup care to ponder that for a bit huh i think cereal is a cereal i think there's a difference like there's oatmeal which i feel like is a cereal and then cereal and Maybe even like parfaits in a way are like a cereal, kind of more in that family, not as much of the soup family. Right. But yeah, because you see that, because what do you call a box of, what do you call a box of the grains when they're not in the milk? You call it cereal. Yeah. Huh. So then when you add the milk, you're make you're, you're then making a soup, I suppose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, soup is kind of a, a more broad term, I suppose, too. Like, you can have, like, a primordial soup. Ooh, right. Like, where, I guess, like, a lake is a soup. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I, I'm i not sure about that one. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Well, cool. Thanks for answering my off-the-cuff questions. Of course. Up next, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to segue into the n- next song, Grand Hotel. And you're listening to that tonight on the sound here at 89.5 KQAL. Sound 
That was Grand Hotel tonight on the sound here at 89.5 KQAL with our special guest, Dante DeGrazia. So, um, what, uh, what were your thoughts on when you were writing Grand Hotel? Um, I wrote that, I wrote the lyrics for that 
when I was in college at Luther, probably like 10 years ago, I went on a trip with two of my friends. We went out to the Badlands. Ooh. And uh, we were passing through like wall drug and all of these kind of fake, eerie Western towns. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's where I wrote the lyrics to the Grand Hotel. It's, it's kind of like a, a cowboy story. Yeah, I think the the Grand Hotel is a pretty ominous place where I think the villains of the story um, do a lot of their planning. Right, right. Um, so you caught me interested on what are the Badlands? The Badlands? That's like in South yeah. Dakota. It's like uh, all those wild rocks that... It's like a, a mini little mountain range. We went camping in there. Um, you can climb up them. They're like made of sand or something. Rock. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know what's funny is that over that somewhere on the outskirts of Winona, I call it the Borderlands. It's kind of a paying an homage to that one game franchise. That, yeah. Yeah. It's really And it's really funny because of how accurate it is. So... <laughs> Uh, looks like you produce um, most of the stuff, most of your own stuff. You're like yourself. Is that like a conscious decision, or do you have plans to go to go big and have it more commercialized? Um, I would if someone someone took interest. I would I would be open to to working with whoever. Really, um, on this album, I worked with a guy named Mike Noyce. Um, he helped mix. He's a really talented dude. He does a lot of the Sleeping Jesus, and he he works with a lot of artists up in Minneapolis. So he kind of he heard a couple songs and took interest and and decided to help me right. work this EP out. But then after that, I had the confidence to put out the next EP, Cat V Mouse, um, with just my own mixing on on one of the songs. So he kind of. Yeah, gave me the little push I needed to to put my own stuff out. Right. So it's so you got so you had a little bit of help with the mixing, but you were given a little bit of a shove to mix some of these yourself. Yeah, that's interesting. I like that. Um, so how does your writing process work? Like, do you start with a melody, the lyrics? Um, kind of depends. I think I'm always writing either music or beats or or words kind of throughout the day constantly working on something throwing little notes in my phone so when something sticks then <clears throat> whether it be music or words then I just run with it um there's no order there really but yeah a lot of the time it will just be a poem that I I wrote that I enjoy and then I'll sing it in my head for a while, for a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden I'll be working on a beat, and that poem will all of a sudden start playing, and I'll realize, it'll start playing in my head, and I'll realize that the lyrics probably now fit this beat, or mm-hmm. vice versa. Just kind of constantly poking away until things stick. Right, right. The one thing that I, the one analogy that I always like to use is you throw, it's like you're throwing darts at a board and see what see what nail what hits the bullseye yeah or paint at the wall just always throw paint at the wall see what looks pretty yeah so um great great time to take another short break and uh segue into another song up next we have the great american outrage machine and you're listening to that tonight on the sound with dante de grazia here at 89.5 kqal
And that was the Great American Outrage Machine here tonight on the sound at KQAL with our guest Dante DeGrazia. So when you said when you said earlier that the latter half of the album gets more political, I suppose that's one of the that's one of the biggest Yeah, this song is the the most political for sure. <laughs> um it came from um not that I watch Fox News. I despise Fox News. Mm-hmm. But I did see Tucker Carlson at one point was using this phrase, the great American outrage machine, um, to refer to, to liberals being woke or, or whatever. And it just, the hypocrisy, I thought was just insane because he, at the time, Tucker Carlson, before he got fired, and Fox News, they literally are this great outrage machine that is their entire purpose is to to just enrage the public in order to keep getting views so i just thought it was insane that he would he would use that term yeah um and yeah i wrote the song um pretty much angry at tucker carlson and the the right wing media so in a way, we got to thank Tucker Carlson because we got a, because we got a song out of it. We did. I don't know <laughs> if it's worth it though. Uh, I hope so. Uh, uh, do you have? So I only looked uh, through your band camp, but is there other? But do you have uh, any physical releases or any other kinds of merch? I do not currently have have any merch, any CDs. Um, yeah, no shirts no shows it's all just kind of yeah this abstract little solo project that hopefully someday we'll we'll start touring it with my friends and and putting putting out some uh some more uh you know professional marketing yeah but right now i like that it's just word of mouth and if people like it they'll listen to it so so it's kind of like one one tiny little hobby that you're working on yeah so that's that's all right um it's really, uh, it's really interesting how fun, how you can start with a fun little solo project and seeing how so, how it'll eventually stick and grow into a one into one big thing. Yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, so what? So um, not just your, with your solo career, with everything else. Kinda, what's up next for you? Do you have any other recordings to uh, to do? Do you have any shows or tours? Uh, yeah, so as far as shows and tours go, um, Sleeping Jesus, um, the band I'm in, we were in Texas last week and got back from Iowa yesterday, now we're headed off to Nashville on Wednesday for a little tour, and, uh, with Texas Toast, the country band, uh, we start our residency at Ed's, or at No Name Bar. Ooh. Um, Texas Toast Tuesdays, so we're playing earlier shows. It's like eight to ten um, on every Tuesday, and that starts tomorrow um, uh, in the morning. No, at oh. night. Oh, cool! <laughs> but I should also plug my next release. Um, it's coming out on November sixteenth, so it's coming up here. Um, it's called So Longs. It's a three song EP. Um, my my friend and and uh, manager kind of man Tyler Steinley um, describes it as jangle pop. It's kind of lo-fi um, inspired by Neutral Milk Hotel. Mm. Okay. So so that, uh, so that should be fun. Texas uh, Texas Toast Tuesdays. Oh, uh, be sure to we'll be sure to plug that in and. Yeah, I gotta talk to Bill about that. Yeah, uh, that you, does sound interesting. If, if you could plug plug that on the radio, that would be great. Oh yeah. So, um, so where can people? So I know I just mentioned Bandcamp, but uh, through but through you through the horse's mouth, um, where can people find your tunes or find out more about you and your shows? Um, to find my tunes, I'm on all the streaming platforms, so Spotify, you know. Uh, I am on Bandcamp also, Apple Music, Title, all that stuff. If you want to follow my solo career, um, 
my Instagram is just my name, and that's that's really where I put out all of my announcements. Uh, my my profile picture is a cute little bunny, Ooh. and uh, yeah, so I'll I'll be putting out a bunch of promo for the So Longs EP this week and next week, and would love if you'd tune in on my Instagram. Oh, cool! I see that. Quite literally, it is a bunny rabbit. It is a cute little bunny rabbit. Oh, fun. Is that just like a, a stock image, or do, is that an actual, or do you have a pet ba- rabbit? It is a stock stock oh. image. Yeah. Had a little mental breakdown in college and decided I was going to be a rabbit on the internet, and it just stuck, and I'm still a rabbit to this day. Mm, do you think you'd one day own a bunny rabbit? I'd probably own a bunny. I have two cats right now, and they're fluffy like bunnies mm. and that's close enough for me right now i feel so sorry for you you have to deal with cats i love cats i also own cats they're they're menaces honestly that they are Ah, <laughs> oh, fun so dante thank you so much for joining us tonight on the sound yes thank you for having me uh do you have any any last plugs any last words to kind of mention huh oh uh Sleeping Jesus released two songs today off of our upcoming album. Um, I would love to plug that here as well. Um, yeah, Old Friend Neil and 25, and you can find find those anywhere anywhere you, you hear music. Awesome. We'll be sure to give that a listen, and we'll be sure to... Um, and I'll be sure to let, uh, let Doug and Bill know. Cool, thank you. All right, cool. So um, up next, we're going to do... Ooh, forgot. Radio. Is there something you want to talk you want to talk about radio before we kind of Sure, yeah. Uh radio um is a a pop song in seven four time. Um and the lyrics are about wanting to be on the radio and the whole purpose of that song was to make the wildest anti pop song that I possibly could that would never traditionally make it on the radio. It's in a weird time signature and it's dark and and then to try to get it on the radio was the plan. Um, and then KQAL played it. Oh yeah. And uh, NPR played it. And yeah, I considered that a success because we got the the weirdest possible song about being on the radio on the radio. Yeah. Something. <laughs> That's really that's really quite a coincidence. Like getting the weirdest song that you don't think will ever appear on the radio. It's like, oh, well, now. Yeah, it was a little challenge that I made <laughs> for myself. Well, that's interesting. Well, thank you for sharing. Yes, of course. All right, up next is radio. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. We've been you've been listening. Uh, you've been talking to Dante DeGrazia from uh, Winona. Here's the last tune, and you're listening out tonight on the sound here at eighty nine point five KQAL.
thanks again to Dante DeGrazia for joining us tonight on The Sound. To hear more from the guy himself, look him up on your favorite streaming services, Bandcamp, Facebook, or Instagram. Just look for the money picture. And be sure to check out Texas Toast Tuesdays every Tuesday at the No Name Bar at 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. For more deep dives into local and regional albums, tune into The Sound every Wednesday night at 6, right here on 89.5 KQAL. You can also listen to previous episodes of The Sound on your favorite streaming services. Find links on kqal.org. I'm Del Malzate, and we just heard from Dante DeGrazia on The Sound. Thanks for listening to The Sound. The Sound is produced by KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University. Visit us online at kqal.org.